Good evening, everybody. A very warm welcome to the show this evening. My name is Nick Thompson. I'm a vet, and I've just calculated that I've been in vet. I've been a vet for 31 years this year, and if you count my time at college. Uh, I will have been in veterinary medicine for 37 years and I have to say that herbal medicine and nutritional medicine for me really is the very heart of good health. If we are looking for uh, uh, productive longevity, we're looking for health span, not just lifespan. I think that uh, herbs and uh, nutrition really are for me at the heart of this thing. We're called The Gut Doctor. This show is The Gut Doctor because the gut is the interface with food. It allows us to take elements from the world and uh, incorporate them healthily for our well-being. I talk about us. When I'm talking about us, I mean our dogs. We and our dogs, we're very, very similar. So much of what pertains to us humans, who are very, very well studied, also pertains to our dogs. This evening, we are going to be discussing uh, vegetarian, vegan, and insect foods for dogs. These are very, very important topics that... Um, I'm very, very, very passionate about as well. I am, uh, I, I've been studying nutrition for decades and I have been in the last decade or so, I've been be becoming more and more interested in regenerative agriculture and how we can make the globe succeed, how we can, uh, you know, my kids and my grandchildren and my grandchildren's grandchildren, how they can survive and thrive on this planet and for me regenerative agriculture involving livestock is is so important so vegetarian vegan and insect foods are very close to my heart um we're going to go into uh, and have a look at the the show shortly um but i'm just going to say that um what we choose, we humans choose to feed ourselves is totally up to us. If you are vegetarian, then good luck to you. Fabulous. I have no problem with that whatsoever. If you are a vegan and you've chosen that, then that's also absolutely fine. You can make a decision as to where you stand in terms of ethics and in terms of your health. Good for you. OK, I'm tr I'm I'm probably going to offend people with the, some of the things that we're going to discuss this evening, but I am not going to tell you how you human should eat. OK, you can do that. But what I do care massively about is that our dogs, our pets, our cats and our dogs. And I really think I'm going to give you the punchline right now. I think that feeding dogs on vegetarian or vegan uh, foods is uh, not a great idea. We're going to talk about insect foods. They're not inherently bad, but I just don't think it's a brilliant idea. And I think we're probably doing it for the wrong reasons. So we're going to jump into that now. Laura is my wing person. <laughs> Rosie, bless you, Rosie. Rosie has uh, had, a, had a baby and I hope you and the whole family are doing very, very well, Rosie. Uh, she's probably busy putting babies to bed and, and what have you right now. But Rosie, we miss you. But Laura is doing the, 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 the main job for me here. So we're going to do the usual thing. And I'm going to go into the corner there. And I'm going to give you this. I've got, just got a new computer, which is really lovely, but it doesn't behave quite the same as as I did pre as, as as the last one did. Hopefully, um, and Laura, please uh, let me know if you can see uh, the screen. Vegetarian insect food for dogs, um, and uh, if you can hear me. Once Laura has let me know then I will continue because we have, she says, yes, 
Laura says yes. So we're in great shape. Okay, important stuff for so many, so many reasons. I could talk to you for hours on this stuff. I'm not going to bore you. We're going to do about 20, 25 minutes or so, and then we're going to get into some questions because I'm sure that there will be questions on these important things. I am abjectly, absolutely against vegetarian and vegan uh, 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 foods for dogs, okay? Insects I can live with, but I'm, I'm just slightly uh, dubious as to the motivation. But we'll go through that. We will go through that uh, as we go. Um, my lovely... Oh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, I, I don't know the first thing about uh, uh, computers, but I did manage to get this lovely... Uh, slightly overweight, uh, chocky lab to uh, to wag his tail, which is lovely. Okay, so um, I was producing, and thank you, by the way, to Vermex, who allows me to put time aside so that I can gather my thoughts and gather images and gather... <sighs> I gather research to present to you. So thank you very much, Vermex, for allowing me that space to be able to communicate this very, very important stuff. And I asked um, ChatGPT to do a picture for me of cattle and dogs grazing in a grassy field. And this is what it does, because I think that vegetarian or vegan food for dogs is about as ridiculous is as, as turning dogs out into a grassy field and expecting them to do well. They can't. They, 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 dogs just don't do well on plant-based diets, okay? They'll survive, and, you know, they are scientifically balanced and what have you, supposedly, but it's... It, it's obviously patently uh, a, a, a ridiculous scenario. We don't feed cattle on steak and lamb and duck. Why on earth would we feed our dogs on a diet which is a vegetarian? You know, uh, cattle are vegetarian and dogs are carnivorous. That's that's the end of it. They may have a they be may be able to take a little journey into omnivory but essentially they are carnivores and i really think that if we have dogs we have got a carnivore in the house and we should be feeding a species appropriate diet which is why humans can eat vegetarian humans can eat vegan um because we have that we have a broad omnivory um uh, there's a wonderful book by uh, Michael Pollan called The Omnivore's Dilemma, which I would suggest is a, a really great one to look at. If you want some more information on on vegetarian, well, veganism, uh, there's a there, there's a, a wonderful book by Lier Keith. Lier spelt like Pierre, but with an L, Lier Keith, and it's called The Vegetarian Myth. She was a 30-year vegan who uh got super ill and she then uh, uh, began to eat meat and she became much healthier with that again i'm not telling you how to eat i'm just saying you know look at look at all the all the all the data i think is is really, really important on this uh, on this sheet i was just saying about chat gpt do you notice the the three cows on the right hand side on the far right hand side actually have dog faces and i thought oh no chat gpt has made a mistake but actually that's how ridiculous it is okay it's you know cattle eat grass dogs are carnivorous and we've got this wonderful perverse image of the cow dogs over there there are a few more if you have a look there are one or two uh, other cow dogs around there so enjoy having a look at that you can go into chat gpd and it'll probably give you something quite similar so um let's have a look at the the vegetarian diet so the difference between vegetarian vegetarians uh depending on who you talk to will eat uh 
eggs and milk and dairy products and what have you because they believe that animals are not killed or harmed in order to produce those products we could talk a lot about that for example uh uh, uh male uh calves in a dairy setup okay they, they are producing milk and they don't harm much the cows in order to produce the milk i think they do but that's another discussion but actually the bull calves are absolutely no use because they're never going to produce milk so uh, they will uh, often be slaughtered so there is death involved in that and the fundamental thing is is in order to eat one has to get over the idea that animals have to die so vegetarians eggs yes honey yes uh dairy products yes which is great because uh, yogurt and kefir and things like this are very 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 important to to uh to to humans kefir for dogs is, is, is potentially a good idea a bit of yogurt if your dog is not dairy intolerant is great absolutely go for it a vegan on the other hand is somebody who chooses to not eat any animal derived product whatsoever so eggs are out honey is out uh dairy is out okay and, and and that's the that's the differentiation i'm sure you know that but i'm just going to put it on the table so that uh, we are all speaking the same language so um i was googling for examples of uh, vegetarian food and this was one of the first ones that came out i didn't even know the pedigree but i think they're jumping on the bandwagon i'm afraid and i think no good can come from it they will make a load of money but i don't think uh, uh, uh optimal canine health will be an outcome here so let's have a look at what's in this in this food so we've got cereal and cereal byproducts and i've got a real problem there because essentially this is just this is this is kibble but at least regular kibble has some meat meal you know which is the most terrible nutrition source in the world however at least it does have some animal derived amino acid sourcing whereas with, the, with these products the most uh um um the 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 the, the the, the ingredient that is that is most uh, within the product is cereals and cereal byproducts. The big problem there for me is that cereals are starchy and they will be broken down to sugars. Sugars will bump up the insulin and insulin is all about laying down stores for winter, essentially. And so I think that the, the dogs on these products will uh, have a much higher tendency to, to obesity and therefore owners may give them less food therefore they're going to run into um, insufficient nutrients because owners are trying to manage the uh, the, 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 the preponderance of, of obesity then we've got uh, soybean products um, and these are uh, as Lea Keith will tell you if you read the book she talks about these are estrogenic and uh not to mention that the fact that they're chopping down the um the 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 uh rainforest in south america you know football pitches every every second every day in order to produce soya uh much of which goes into um feeding uh feeding animals and here we have it we're feeding our dogs now with soybean products then we've got uh hydrogenated vegetable oil which is high in omega-6 omega-6 is pro-inflammatory which is then going to predispose to diabetes to obesity to ibs um uh, ibd and um general inflammatory problems uh, most diseases autoimmune disease as well most diseases most modern diseases are are immune uh, uh driven and are inflammation driven driven dicalcium phosphate is a source of calcium and phosphorus uh, because there's no bony material there it's not that well absorbed but it means that they can get the levels that they need to put on the bag and then even halfway down we've got minerals and vitamins 
Um, and that's a real shame because I think if the diet is made from real food, I formulate uh, diets all the time and we are, it's, it's not easy, but you can just using food, tick all the Fediaf uh, or AFCO uh, boxes and, and, and achieve the nutrients that you need. The, um, the great thing about using food is that the bioavailability, the absorbability of those products for dogs and cats uh, is much greater um, than if you use synthetic minerals and vitamins. Then we've got uh, uh, flavors and colors, <laughs> probably because the product doesn't taste great in the first place. Um, and colors you know look at it it's kind of pale pea green you know of all things we then get down to to salt salt is usually in at about one percent so that means everything above that uh the the, the salt is ab above a one percent everything below is below one percent um milk powder yeah milk it will be pasteurized uh for dogs and these dogs will be on it every single day. I think that's just a, a really bad idea. It's a great way to develop intolerances to milk proteins and 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 what have you. Uh, choline chloride, because there's no meat in it. Choline is normally, you, you, you get it from uh, muscle and heart meat. Uh, then they have to put in antioxidants to, to make sure that this the whole shebang doesn't, um, doesn't oxidize. Uh, and then way at the end, we've got pea powder and carrot powder in at such low levels that they are almost non-existent. And yet, uh, it, because they put them in, they can put them into the into the visuals. Yeah, you see there, peas are, are very prominent, and yet they're a minuscule element within the uh, within the product itself. And there are some carrots there as well so i think that this is uh it's really quite worrying that they are giving the impression of uh containing lots of veggies but actually it's just soya and cereal essentially which is just so sad so sad um here's another uh product uh this is uh, another vegetarian product and they claim that uh, the vegetarian uh, uh, feeding will provide a healthy coat. I just don't think that that's the way because dogs have been eating animal fats uh, for 45 million years and I just don't think that coats are going to do well long term if there's no animal fats in there. Fewer ticks and lice. I have never read any study that says that vegetarian dogs will get less ticks and lice so I don't actually believe that. Boost the immune system really with all that omega-6 from the hydrogenated vegetable oils which the wise nutritionists nowadays is saying um avoid uh seed oils vegetable oils we should be avoiding those things as well and yet they're putting them in here it's pro-inflammatory i just can't see how there's going to be a significant improvement in the immune system over say a raw or a lightly cooked product weight control mm, uh starch sugar insulin says that weight control is not uh it may be quite a low calorie product because there's no animal fats in it but um it's now considered a myth that uh calories are a, a, a useful way of assessing the obesogenic or otherwise um uh, capability of a food okay and then we talk about allergy control yes i will give you that yeah because there's no animal proteins in the product and therefore if you've got a dog who's a bit chicken allergic or beef allergic or something like that yeah they're not going to be exposed to those but i think that's pretty much cutting off your nose to spite your face i work with a lot of dogs who are beef or chicken intolerant and we just take them off those products that they can't tolerate we build up um gut health microbiome health um 
and that's uh, that's a, a, a great way. And sometimes within six, 12 months, they can go back onto those 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 products. Reduces bad breath. Really? You know, if 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 you're feeding a fundamentally unhealthy product, then I think you're going to have you're going to be fun, fundamentally metabolically poor and and you know when you're sick you smell different so um i think that that's that's pretty common if you're feeding a really bad meat-based kibble and you go on to this then you may i guess get a, uh, a, a an improvement in breath but for me the best breath is on raw and lightly cooked dogs uh you know our, we've got three we've got three now actually We've got a puppy, Jet. He is now, how old is he now? He's about 18 weeks old, and he's absolutely amazing. He's bigger than the two girls, Bluebell and Mouse, already. Even he's he's a tiny, he's a, he's a lurcher. Yeah, he's a greyhound cross. What How big he's actually going to get, we're not sure. He's still got quite big feet on him, so he's come, coming. And um, he uh, he's now on raw food, and he's breath sweet absolutely great teeth in great shape and uh mouse and bluebell there they've always been on raw and they're obviously in, in they're in great shape you can see on on bluebell especially she's got quite a sheen coat um a mouse has a matte coat but uh you can you just you can just see her gleaming sometimes i just sit there and look at the gleam on her coat and have great delight and healthy heart i just can't see how that's going to be um i think that omega-3 fatty acids are key to a healthy heart and th there is no fish oil or krill oil in these products whatsoever so i i'd like to see some, some some justification for that i told you i could talk forever on this stuff um so i'm just going to speed up a wee bit so um this is a this is a, a vegetarian offering from lily's kitchen i'm sure the the the, the, the ingredients are very good lily's doing their best um but they are using for example the vitamin a from carrots there's not that much in them especially if they've been super processed like this but it's not very absorbable the best retinol the best vitamin a source is from meat and heart and liver uh pumpkin for vitamin a yeah, there's just vanishing quantities of a there is fiber yeah there is fiber uh amaranth uh, interesting I'll, I'll show you the next slide in a second amaranth for complete protein take note of that um they the, the one good ingredient is cottage cheese and yes there is uh, protein and calcium there broccoli does have potassium and iron but you need to eat mountains of broccoli to get anywhere near even a small serving of uh, liver for the for the nutrient density that they have there have a look at this uh, i won't bore you but um Carrots, ten percent. Cottage cheese, ten percent. Um, uh, they're using linseed oil there. Yeah, it's okay, I guess. Um, but if you notice on the previous one, they say amaranth for complete protein. Okay, but actually, the most significant sources of protein are cottage cheese and dried egg. So. They're being a little bit um, economic with 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 their with their descriptions. They have to put the egg in because otherwise the protein level wouldn't be high enough. Okay, so um, I'm 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 worried about this this type of product. I'm sure dogs could survive you know uh, possibly even for a lifetime would they be living their best life i really don't think so this is going one step further this is lily's this is their vegan offering and look at it you know 10 percent potatoes six percent courgettes and carrots um and then there's millet and lupin uh and and lentils i mean it's 
you know, there's just there's there's very little nutrition in these things, which is why they have to add uh minerals. Yeah, I see just beyond sunflower oil, sunflower oil being high in omega-6, therefore high yes, as a as a as a as an a pro-inflammatory uh, uh element, which shouldn't be near any dog's diet. Um, they have to put minerals in. And as uh, Zoe Harkham says, any diet that requires a supplement in order to make it complete is not healthy by definition. Um, for example, uh, the, the, the big one with vegans is B12, vitamin B12, but also iron can be a problem. And um, uh, the, 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 the essential elements that we do get from meat, choline and creatine and, and these kind of things. So I'm sorry, it's, it's, it's just not going to cut the mustard. Um, lovely range of, of herbs down there. As I say, I'm a big fan of herbs and there's some goldenrod, nettles and aniseed, and rose hips. And, yeah, all these things fabulous love those but that doesn't displace the fact that it, it I, I i don't think that this is great food for our dogs let's have a look at some insects this is the the, the, the one that's been out for for the longest and you know yeah i think it, you know insects are a useful way of turning pretty poor food that would otherwise just be turned into fertilizer or something like this that you can feed it to to insects they then create this insect protein which you can feed to dogs it is possible and it it, it is useful sometimes with dogs who've got many 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 uh intolerances to um regular um, uh, meat proteins okay so I, I can see it's there however it is a processed it's an ultra processed uh product and if you go to your doctor and say i'd like to eat purely ultra processed food for the rest of my life they will they will have apoplexy i absolutely promise you if you want a great book there's a book by um uh van Tulliken and here's chris van Tulliken. i think his name first name chris van Tulliken. it's called ultra processed people we've spoken about it on this show before it's an absolute cracker if you have a food geek in your house then buy it for christmas for them they will thank you on bended knee so there you go insect the the reason that i kind of object to the insect is that i think some of the thinking behind it is that uh uh ruminants cattle and sheep are causing for example global warming are significantly contributing to global warming and therefore if we reduce the number of cattle and sheep on the planet then by feeding insects rather than cattle and sheep then that will be good for the planet and i totally and utterly reject that that concept if we for example as some vegans would like got rid of all cattle and all sheep what and who is going to fertilize the land um i'm gonna leave it there before i get too upset <laughs> okay so this is the the insect product this is how you farm insects which just looks terrible to me i mean they have their place you know and i'm going to talk about that in a second and here you go. This is what you get out the other end of the uh, of the insect farm. Uh, I, you know, I have actually eaten. Uh, I had. I went to St David's. There's a there's a, uh, an insect uh, um, kind of museum, a, 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 an education center there, and they gave us spaghetti bolognese that was made with insects and tasted fine absolutely fine so it doesn't if the thought is is pretty off-putting but you know in practice you know, a bit here and there i haven't got a problem with that um what i do think we should do is use all this uh, this this waste 
food can't bear wasted food we use all that waste food and we feed it to the insects and then we feed the insects to our poultry okay and then we can you know uh, feed the world with, with 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 poultry hopefully very well reared welfare friendly and out as in the environment as much as possible um but i think that that is a really really good use did you know that the the figures for food waste in in globally 40 percent of food that comes off the farm we have discussed this in the gut doctor before but 40% of food that comes from the farm is wasted. Can you believe that? 40% of food in the in uh, so-called developed countries, we tend to waste it by, you know, just stuff going off in your fridge. That would be the, one of the main areas. But in the so-called developing countries, the waste comes because of the the slowness of moving from the farm to the uh, to the consumer there's a lot of spoilage of meat and vegetable material and what have you because the infrastructure in these countries is 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 poor so it's an interesting phenomenon but just think four out four 40 percent uh are of, of food is currently wasted which i think is, a, is is criminal imagine if we just reduced that by half say we could probably feed another billion two billion people are worried oh my god there's going to be 10 billion people on the planet and we can't feed them yeah we totally can feed them because we've currently got 40 percent waste so i think that the future is looking very bright we just need to really engage with uh with us uh as as a, as a wasteful species um we could even feed the insects to pigs I think there's there's wisdom there. You know what do, what do pigs do? They rootle around in the soil and eat insects. So I think that there's 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 real wisdom there. Isn't that a fantastic picture? I love pigs. My first job uh, up in up in East Yorkshire was with pigs, and I absolutely fell in love with them there. Um, uh, so I just cannot see the justification for vegetarian or vegan dogs i think it's it's a very very bad idea when we could be feeding species appropriate beautiful species appropriate uh, uh, food to our dogs making them healthy keeping them away from uh, uh, unnecessary veterinary attention they're healthier they're happier they've got better energy they smell less poos are easier to pick up less problem with anal glands less problem with mucky gunky ears and itchy dogs and what have you it's i think i really do think that 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 raw or lightly cooked food really is the future um if you can't bear or th th there's, there's some other reason that you can't use uh, raw food then uh, uh companies like Def different dog for example they lightly cook uh, small batches of essentially it's kind of a meaty stew with some veggies and what have you they then put them in a nice little punnet like that freeze them and uh, they, they can send them to you i can totally totally live with 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 that if for some reason you can't um feed raw so um uh i'm gonna finish again here saying i think we should feed species appropriate food to our pets our dogs and our cats uh, a bit of insect uh, uh, protein here and there i haven't got a problem with it but uh, you know uh, don't tell me it's for ecological reasons because we need our ruminants dramatically utterly and we always always have done always will do and and they are a mainstay of of human health so uh there you go guys i'm gonna come back here and i'm gonna take that one away there there you go see i'm still here um how are we doing for time? oh my goodness sorry guys it's <laughs> it's 7 36 i'm only just scratching the surface of this topic i hope i haven't offended anybody um but i 
forgive me, this is just such an important um, topic and, and we really, really um, have to get to get to grips with it. Um, and let's just do a few uh, a, a few questions to see if we've got any questions. Uh, la, 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 let me look. Somebody... <laughs> Martina, I love your comment. Here you go. I'll share. I'll share it in case you haven't seen it. She's talking about the raw pet medics. We do a, a show at seven p.m. on a on a Tuesday. Uh, Connor Brady, uh, Brendan Clark, and I. And um, Martina's a big fan and uh, fabulous. We we love you. That's for sure, Martina. Um, so we've been called witch doctors. <laughs> <laughs> the three of us are witch doctors. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, uh, yeah, if you're feeding raw, then organ meat is absolutely key. If you can bear to eat organ meat yourself, a bit of liver here and there, a bit of kidney here and there. I'm talking you, humans. I think it's, it's very, very, very important. If you can't bear that and you're not vegan, uh, or veggie then you can get capsules actually you can get uh, capsules uh, hunter and gather do a capsule it's icelandic lamb's kidney and icelandic lamb's liver and you can just pop those you know uh, and that will that will help you to get all those essential nutrients uh, from the uh, from the food uh, vivian thank you Vivian, very, very much. She's got two fabulous um, flatties, and uh, it's 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 uh, it's interesting. Oh yes, she is. She's she's a veggie, and she feeds her dogs a species appropriate. So one could argue vegetarianism is appropriate for for humans. Great, uh, but she does feed. I know a lot of vegetarians and vegans actually who do feed their dogs on. Uh, on a raw food diet and i think that's absolutely fantastic i always make sure that i praise them uh greatly for their choice of of a of a species appropriate diet um uh paul said we can hear you that's great <laughs> the trouble is paul is that when i go to the screen i can't see i can't see any comments which is why i need uh laura bless her to uh we need uh, Laura to to give me the the update. That was a little that was a WhatsApp message just there. I'm not sure whether you can see it or not. I'm, yeah, um, FIFA. My daughter is is has gone skiing of all things uh, to Italy with the school, and so <laughs> every evening we get the pictures from the day, which is just brilliant. Uh, Diane, thank you very much. Um, really appreciate your support. Um, Hannah, totally agree. And Tracy says dogs need meat. Yes, 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 yes. The figure, by the way, in the USA, there's an approximate figure for how many animals die within arable. That is to say, oh, I've got a, I've got a ladybird. So if you see something crawl over the, the camera, <laughs> it's a ladybird. I don't want to kill him. Um, but that's that's why um the number of creatures living individuals who die in order to produce arable that is to say not animal farming is about seven billion per year so that's one country and and that's seven million creatures these would be mice who get caught up in the combine harvester or um uh, grazing deer that have to be shot so they don't poach the you know the, the, the corn or, or or wheat fields and things like this seven billion to produce wheat and soya and maize and and what have you so that's just something to 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 think about it's where there's food there's death i'm afraid um angela says it's still kibble you're absolutely right um uh, maria says love site i'm gonna put that up <laughs> thank you marie marie sorry marie conley uh marvelous um there you go i think 
Um, uh, not really very many questions. Uh, oh, what does Diane said something about books? How do you keep up with all these books? I love it. I love it. It's like breathing for me. I will. I will be listening to either a podcast or an audio book. Even if I go to the loo, <laughs> I'll do it. Even if I'm brushing my teeth, I'll have my phone here or I'll have headphones uh, to do it. It's just, it's, it's, there's just so much wonderful stuff out there. Um, there you go. I think everybody's, uh, everybody's just making comments and not so many questions. So, guys, I'll detain you no longer. Uh, it's lovely, lovely, lovely to talk to you. Um, we will be back in the new year. Keep your eyes on the Vermex um, page and we will publicise. Laura does all that clever stuff. She will publicise uh, and we will see you in January and uh, hope you have a wonderful Christmas and wonderful new year and that you eat species appropriate food till you burst um it's so 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 important and i hope you're feeding your dogs in the best possible way that you possibly can i'm gonna sign off for now guys it's lovely to talk to you and uh thank you for all your support really 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 appreciate it i'm gonna i'm gonna take my leave see you in the new year <laughs>